I wonder, Mark, are we showing our outdatedness with our love for words and our treasuring of words? When you, when I think about what you do, Chief Fayanda, with the rhythm, with the drum, I was in Senegal and some people were drumming and they were laughing because in the drum, they were talking about me around me with the drum and knew what each other was saying. When we think about the young people rapping today, they're rapping to a rhythm, a flow. They don't even write nothing no more. They just, what it feel like. And that reminds me of the Jeet Kune Do of Bruce Lee. What is, what's my style? No style, it's just a flow. So when we listen to people like, um, uh, 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 um, you know, any of the newest rappers, Drill, Trap, whatever you want to, you know, do, Amigos, whoever, right? Are, are they really just connecting with the vibration and we're upset because we don't understand the words? And so it kind of brings... But, but are we sure they do? Uh, my question is just, are we sure that they do? Like, if it, and there's mean? a wide range from Migos to, like, Lil Uzi to, like, you know, like, I guess what I'm saying is, like, is there a powerful spiritual thing happening all the time or is it sometimes... Cats just ain't saying nothing. I think there's always a powerful spiritual thing happening, whether you're saying something or not. Like, you know, there's always a vibration happening and they're feeling each other's vibes. This is an evolution. I think where we got to catch up is to the vibration and not the words. Our generations and the ones before us have always been tricked by words because we didn't understand the spirit of the word. I think mm -hmm. our kids understand the spirit of the word, but they don't have the, the, the righteous spirit. And when we catch up with the spirit, then we won't even be mad about the words. We'll just give them the right spirit. Mm. Is it's it the language. Oh. It's language. It's not about the words. It's not about the words. It's about the language and what is being communicated through the vibration, right? Mm -hmm. Because the vibration has to be intentional. The vibration yeah. has to be purposeful. And so if there's something that's traveling on the vibration, that the vibration is just the carrier. It's just the vehicle that transmits the understanding. Mm -hmm. So if the, trans if the understanding is being transmitted, then we have no challenge and we have no issue. The but the proof is in the pudding. What is the work doing? What is the result? Yes. Right? Because it yes. has to be effective. It has to be purposeful and effective. When it's purposeful and effective, then we see the alchemy. We see the way that we created the change. We see that we created the, the effect that's purposeful and intentional. If not, then, so the language has to be language. What do they say? It has to be, the, 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 the language has to be languaging. You know what I'm saying? It has to be doing that. If it's not, then it's not. Then but but, but that also depends on where you're at, right? If you're in America, it's not languaging. It's, it's languishing. So, you know, if you, <laughs> I like that. I like if that. If you are in Yemen, there was a rapper that started the Arab Spring just by his vibration and, and his protest. If you're in Senegal right now where they're having elections, it is the young people using their art that's leveraging that new kind of political power in Senegal. It's only America where the capitalism interrupts the vibration. When I think about the fruit of, of these vibrations, as y'all are talking about it, it's just so many of these young rappers, and I hate to sound like this dude. I never thought I would sound like this dude, but <laughs> I is like, but I'm like, we just we're we're killing ourselves, we're killing each other, mm. we're taking so many drugs, we're doing so much harm. Now there's a lot of beauty in hip hop. There's a lot of great stuff happening, but there's this generation of artists coming up, just like there was a generation of artists when we came up that was doing wild stuff. We this ain't the first generation to do it, but it, those same rappers that are mumble rappers and the same rappers that are talking about taking taking perks and, and, and syrup and all this stuff I, i'm not seeing the products you know of these vibrations being positive i'm seeing a lot of self-harm i'm seeing a lot of i'm seeing a lot of community harm um and i'm i'm worried about them i'm not saying that to, to shame them or to castigate them i'm literally worried that this generation but but isn't it interesting mark that that our generation was the drug dealers and our children are the drug users did we do it to them for sure, it's our fault. <laughs> For sure, it's our fault. That's what I'm saying. I ain't blaming them. And here's the other thing, and this might be my own issue. I genuinely have more have more respect for the drug dealer. I genuinely have more respect for the drug dealer than the drug user. In 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 at the level of at the 
a, 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 a old head or a homie told me something that an old head said they were saying he's like he's like the old head of our generation to our generation and he said he said back in the 90s and the 2000s when y'all was robbing people y'all was robbing niggas y'all was locking niggas up. i mean y'all was y'all was robbing niggas y'all was shooting and stuff like that mm-hmm. y'all told us that you had to do it because you had to eat and we didn't like it but we understood it y'all was robbing niggas y'all said y'all was selling dope y'all said because y'all needed to eat we ain't like it but we understood it he said now i see y'all doing it for likes i see y'all doing it for clicks i see it, it's like there's a way that at a desperation desperate people do desperate things right I worry that we created such a culture that this next generation of folk, even when they're not that desperate or as def- des- desperate or similarly desperate, they're still making choices that they don't have that are that are not helpful and that are actually deeply harmful for our community. So yeah, we created the mess, no doubt, and it's our job to fix it as the as the elders and as the old heads. Now I don't doubt that, but I just don't want to romanticize what they're doing because I feel like I worry that sometimes we can see the harm and romanticize it in such a way that we don't address it because we feel like it's not that bad and i might sound like the conservative in the room at this moment but that's that's how i'm feeling at the moment you know what i'm saying yeah. I'm trying to it. I, know, I, know, I know i know <laughs> i know and that's what i'm like I, I i hear myself saying it and i'm like damn it's what happens when we disconnect the actions from the repercussions right mm. so when we throw a pebble in the pond we throw the pebble in the pond there are rippling effects of that action that are taken right and so we don't always know what those rippling effects are going to do or are what they're what they are or how they're going to play out but we have to know that they are going to play out right and so even to to the, to that point it's about empowerment and about being purposeful and intentional in our actions right and so so why why have we decided um that desperation is an acceptable uh, being desperate is acceptable once being desperate is acceptable and acceptable, acceptable justification for an action, now that becomes a normalization of desperation. I'm choosing to say, no, desperation is not my normal. That's not my, that's not my baseline, right? That's the, that's the challenge. We're going to get outside of the challenge, not let that be our norm. But here's the thing. Desperation is acceptable because desire was amplified. So when it's like, I don't have this, I don't got that, I crave this, I want to have sex every day, I need more drugs, I gotta pay for it, I got I got anxiety. If I don't take this, mm-hmm. if I don't take these perks, bro, my anxiety, like I got depression. Oh my God. Like, so all of these desires and needs created the desperation. I'm lonely. I don't have friends. Nobody understands me. It puts you in a desperate situation. And so, you know, I I guess what we have to ask ourselves, brothers, is how do we how do we bring down the craving? How do we how do we manage the desires of our children or what they think they should have? How many young people do you know that are hard on themselves because they don't got a house by 24? Right. right. <laughs> like, you know, we, we our society has too much. And it's hard to tell people they got too much. It's hard to tell somebody they too comfortable. And nobody, you know what I do as an artist, like to make sure that I don't creep into the discontent of elderliness and like become a curmudgeon. I always throw myself into an uncomfortable situation that I'm like, why did I do this? that I have to rise to the challenge. But what I find about our young people, everybody, and older people too, everybody's running toward comfort. And that's the problem. We gotta learn to be uncomfortable. Like only the growth only comes through the discomfort. Only through the discomfort. And, 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 and our, our desperation comes from being comfortable so long that we gotta catch up to our comfort when it runs. What role does social media play in sort of compromising our values or or shifting us away from values that are uh, healthy for us, especially as you talk about this question of discomfort? And the reason I ask that is because you're talking about like how many people feel bad or are hard on themselves for not having a house at 24. And I'm like, yeah, I know people like that. Mm-hmm. But those people don't worry me as much as the people I'm meeting now that feel like they got to all... They, 
they, they got to pretend that they live in a great a great apartment. They got to pretend that they're eating at the finest restaurants. They got to pretend that they're in VIP at the club. And so on Instagram and all these other places, they they have to create a life that's not there. And then when they turn the camera off, there's a there's a self worth. It's all bound up in this capitalism stuff we're talking about, right? Your value is bound up in how much jewelry you got, even if it ain't really yours. You know, having a certain kind of crib, having a certain kind of experience. You know, I've I've had I've I've watched people work for work for a courier service. You know what I'm saying? And they go to the store to pick up a bag, something fancy for the courier service, but they stop, they pull out their phone, they take a selfie with it. And I know it's on their TikTok or Instagram the next day as if that's the life they're living. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, you, you're a rapper. I mean, how many times how many times have you seen fans, you know, pretend to be in VIP or they ask a rapper for a, a, a selfie. And next thing you know, they're on the Instagram, like kicking it with Ron Fest tonight. And it's like, I don't know you. Right. Yeah. But, 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 but what we teach people to perform success and to perform joy and to perform happiness. I mean, you go to rap shows now or R&B shows or so, you know. And everybody got their phone out and everybody's making content. And it's like, nobody's actually feeling double the spirit. Nobody's it's connecting spiritually with the music. How can you, if the whole time you just, you, you're doing selfies and, and, and you, and you recording the concert. 